In the voice of Russia World Service, welcome to another edition of the Christian Message from Moscow. continue acquainting you with the writings of 19th century Russian saint Ignatius Brenchaninov. Today you shall hear his reflections on death. common, unavoidable lot of all people on earth is death. We fear it as our direst enemy. We bemoan the loss of our dear and loved ones claimed by it, and yet lead our lives in a manner as if it does not exist, and we are immortal. My grave. Why is it I forget your existence? You are waiting for me to come to you, and I shall for certain become your resident. So how is it I am forgetful of you, and conduct myself as if the grave is a lot that befalls others, with the exception of myself? Sin robs me of the perception of any truth. It eradicates from my mind all recollections of death, that all-important event for me. To remember death, one needs to lead a life in harmony with the Lord's commandments. Christ's commandments cleanse the heart and mind, mortifying them for the world, yet rescuing and animating them for Christ. A mind purged of worldly attachments more insistently begins to address the mystical transition to eternity, to death. A purified heart begins to anticipate it. A heart and mind estranged from the world seek eternity, loving Christ. They insatiably long to stand before him, Although they quake in fear of the hour of death, keenly aware of God's greatness and their own humble sinfulness. For they perceive death as at once a fearsome exploit and a long sought deliverance from earthly captivity. If we are unable to welcome death due to our lukewarm sentiments towards Christ 
and fervid love for temporality. Then at least let us resort to recollections of death as a bitter medicine against our sinful nature. For memory of death, as the Holy Fathers refer to this awareness upon taking root in our soul, severs its friendship with sin and all sinful pastimes. Only he who is in harmony with thoughts of one's imminent end is able to put an end to one's sins, said Saint Isaac Syrian. Rise from your bed as if resurrected from the dead. Retire to your bed as if to your coffin. Slumber is but a simulation of death, and the darkness of night, precursor of the darkness of the grave, after which the light of resurrection shall shine forth, joyous for all of Christ's followers, and fearsome for his enemies. A thick cloud, although it is composed of vaporous substances, blocks out the sunlight. Thus, pleasures of the flesh, absent-mindedness, and trivial earthly cares blind the spirit to the grandness of eternity. For eyes afflicted with blindness, the sun shines down from the pure heavens in vain. And eternity does not exist for a heart weighted down by earthly cares, the joys and the temptations offered. Death is fierce towards the sinners. It strikes when they least expect it when they have not prepared for it or for eternity and have but a vague notion of either of the two. Death sweeps the unprepared sinners off the face of the earth on which they but solicited God's wrath, passing them into the eternal dungeons of hell. want to retain an ever-present awareness of death. Restrict yourself to moderation in food, dress, all household attributes. See to it that essential goods do not become items of luxury. Study the Lord's word every day and night, or as often as possible, and memory of death shall not forsake you memory of it shall be joined with the floods of tears, the repentance for one's sins, the resolutions to redeem them through fervid and lengthy prayer. Who of the people have remained to live on earth forever? None. So I shall follow in the footsteps of my forefathers, brothers, and all my near and dear ones. My body shall be laid to rest in the gloom of the tomb, while the fate of my soul shall be shrouded in impenetrable mystery for all remaining residents of the earth. My relatives and friends shall shed tears for me. Perhaps those will be bitter tears. Yet afterwards, they shall forget. Thus wept for and mourned ah, thousands of people. They have been counted 
and are remembered only by God Almighty. Hardly was I born conceived in the womb, death laid claim to me. He is mine, she said, immediately setting aside a scythe for me. From the moment of my existence, she brandishes it above my head. I may become death's victim any moment. There were many close shots, yet one last sure stroke is unavoidable. Death looks down on earthly cares with a cold grimace of contempt. An architect conceives a grandiose building. An artist has not completed his exquisite painting. A genius is honing brilliant plans, yet death comes unexpected and implacable, and all their plans are reduced to nothing. Austere death has a reverence for the servant of Christ, conquered by Christ. She bears respect only for a life in Christ. The heavenly messenger often forewarns those serving Christ of their impending transition to blessed eternity. Prepared for death and life, comforted by the testimony of their conscience and promise from above, with a smile on their lips, they slip into the eternal slumber that is death. Have you ever observed the body of a righteous person when the spirit has abandoned it? There is no malauda. One feels no fear in approaching it. At burial, one's grief is diluted by a sense of inconceivable joy. The facial features, fixed as they were in the moments of parting with the spirit, mirror a profound tranquility, and at times, the joy of welcome encounters and embraces. With the angels and the saints that are sent from the heavens for the souls of the righteous. Assail my memory, my death. Come to me, bitter, yet just and salutary recollection. Detach me from sin. Set me right on the coast towards Christ. May the memory of death make my hands feeble in all empty, sinful, and vain undertakings. Assail my memory, my death, and may the trappings of vanity and conceit elude me. I shall rid my table of steaming repast, shed the robes of luxury, and don the robes of lament. For mourning my death, for I am benumbed dead from my very birth. So, lament and formourn your death, says the memory of death. I have come to disappoint you as a benefaction, 
I bear a host of salubrious thoughts. Sell your excess wealth, distribute the money among the poor, and the Saviour bequeathed, may your riches precede you to the heavens. They shall meet their owner there, having grown manifold. Weep, bitter tears, and say fervid prayers for oneself. Who else can remember you so assiduously and sincerely after your demise as you yourself prior to death? Do not entrust others with the task of saving your immortal soul. When you can manage this ultimately important business yourself, why waste energies on the temporal wealth if death shall surely claim it all? She administers the Lord's decrees the moment she hears it with lightning speed she rushes to comply. She shall not balk before rich man, hero or genius. She shows no mercy for youth, beauty or earthly happiness. One is swiftly transported to eternity. Through the gates of death, pious man enters the beatitude of eternity, while the enemy of God falls headlong into eternal torment. The memory of death is a gift of God, say the Holy Fathers. This gift is given the God-faring so as to strengthen them in their resolve to achieve repentance and salvation. The memory of death shall come to you only after your own efforts to recall it. Exert yourself to frequently think of death. Assure yourself of the inviolable truth that you shall certainly die at one moment or another. And only then shall your mind be accosted by the memory of death, a profound and forceful memory. It shall deal a deadly blow to all your sinful ventures. A sinner is deprived of this spiritual gift. Even in the face of imminent death, he continues to partake of the sinful carnal pleasures, casting aside all thoughts of death, breeding in his face. By contrast, even surrounded by splendor, a pious, God-fearing person shall never forget the coffin that is awaiting him and shall shed salutary tears for his soul. Amen. You are listening to St. Ignatius Brinchaninov's Reflections on Death, they were read by Gennady Nikiforov. And there we end another edition of the Christian Message from Moscow. It was directed by Vladimir Diomin, editor and author of the musical framework Tatiana Shvitsova, sound engineer Yelena Gashenikova, and your host Svetlana Yekmenko. Until we meet again next week, God save you all from all harm.
милуй, Господи, помилуй. Премудрость прости, услышим святого Евангелия. Мир всем! И упали к Твоему! От Матфея святого Евангелия, чтение!